Did you miss me? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health, addiction recovery, and all that good stuff. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So if you're following me on social media, you know where I've been, you know, all right? So, uh, or if you pay attention to the community tab, I have rediscovered my passion for writing. So I've been doing a bunch of daily content over on Medium, I'll link my Medium down below, but I wanna start getting back into the groove of doing YouTube. But anyways, if you want your daily dose of mental health and recovery topics, make sure you go check out my Medium page. All right, but anyways, uh, this is something that I was thinking about. Um, I've still been keeping up to date and I've been reading a lot of books. I set my goal for this year to read 150 books. I'm already four or five books in this year. Um, but anyways, uh, something that I've always wondered about is why certain people are able to stay sober and others aren't. Right, so those of you who don't know me, um, I've been clean and sober for seven and a half years. My drug of choice started off with alcohol, then I went into prescription opioids, and yeah, I was dying from this thing. And one of the ways that I stayed sober was by closely watching everybody around me, right? And I'm always just sitting there analyzing. I have one of those over analytical brains, you might be able to relate to that. But I'm like, how is this person staying sober? and this person isn't, all right? And after a few years sober, I started working at an addiction treatment center. This was like a bougie treatment center, all right? Like without insurance, I think for 30 days, it was like 30 grand. Our outpatient was like five or six grand. So typically the people who had insurance that would cover that, they were wealthy, they had money, you know? Um, some of them were, you know, kids who had rich families. Um, other people were just well off in their life. They had, you know, great careers because people who are addicts, they're hard workers, man. Like some of the most successful people I know are either addicts or addicts in recovery. Like we're the type of people where we set our minds on something and we go after that thing. You know, unfortunately, some of the times or most of the time it's drug or alcohol, you know? But anyways, through working at the treatment center and through my own years of recovery, I've noticed this, this pattern of people who are well off financially um, and they struggle staying sober. And I always ask myself, why is that? So currently, um, I'm reading this new book. So I just got introduced to Malcolm Gladwell, all right? So those of you who know my reading, uh, type. I love nonfiction and I know Malcolm Gladwell is like one of the most famous authors of nonfiction out there. So I started out by reading uh, Talking uh, to Strangers. Like last week I read that book and oh my god, such a phenomenal book. I read that book and I'm like, wow, no wonder why this dude is like at the top of everybody's list. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend that book. Go check it out. So now I'm going through his back catalog and the book I'm currently reading is David and Goliath, all right? I'm a few chapters in, but basically this book is all about, you know, uh, not just, you know, the story of David and Goliath, but why we think that certain weaknesses are a bad thing when they're actually good, or we think that certain strengths are good when they might be bad. All right, and that's kind of what I wanna talk about when we're talking about why rich people have a hard time staying sober. So one of the anecdotes that was in the book, which is very fascinating to me, which is quite common, was there was a story of this, I think he was a Hollywood producer, or somebody who worked in Hollywood, and this dude is ballin', like he is rich as hell, right? And he started out with very humble beginnings. Like he was a young entrepreneur, like he had a, a, a show, uh, a snow shoveling service where he would pay other kids to shovel the snow and then he would keep, you know, the profits, right? So he'd pay them a certain amount, keep it, and he would save up money and all that. And he had a father who like really instilled in him like hard work, be good with money, all this other stuff. And throughout his life, that really paid off because he learned the value of hard work and now he's this very successful like multi-millionaire, right? But now he struggles because he has children of his own who will never know that struggle. Like they're always going to be fine. You know what I mean? So this is kind of what I think about when it comes to recovery, because so many of us 
And even if you're not trying to recover from a drug addiction, but even, you know, depression, anxiety, trauma, all these things, we look at them as a weakness, but through my years of sobriety and looking back at my own personal journey, like I am grateful today for the struggles that I've been through, right? Because I think one of the biggest weaknesses, the Goliath out there, is people who are financially stable when they get sober or even rich. Like we see a lot of celebrities who are constantly in and out of rehab, in and out of rehab, in and out of rehab. And if you're a recovering addict like me, like you look at these people, you're like, what's going on? But from my experience, it seems to be that that is their biggest crutch, right? Because I just want you to put yourself in their shoes real quick. When you're rich, especially if you're famous, right? Like you have a ton, a ton of yes people all around you. You have enablers just surrounding you. There are people, some people who are hanging around you just to, you know, get clout, or they like that you could take them out to fancy dinners and expensive vacations and all that. Like how many of those people are gonna tell you what you need to hear when it might mean losing their meal ticket? You know what I'm saying? But it's also hard for them to lose anything. Like when you have that much money, it's difficult to get sober and stay sober because there's not really any drawback to keep using. You know what I'm saying? Like, think about it. Like, if you keep using, let's say you lose like a gig, right? A job, a tour, whatever it is, you still have an insane amount of money, right? Like, before Michael Jackson passed away, he was struggling with his addiction, but there were, uh, I remember, because I was such a huge fan of Michael Jackson, Fun fact, my middle name is Michael, named after Michael Jackson. But anyways, he was struggling with his addiction before he ended up passing away, before that big tour he was going to go on, right? But like, even if that tour didn't happen, even though some of it was to make some money back because he was in a lot of debt, like, he would have been fine. He would have still had his mansion. So when you look at rich people, like, the only thing they really have to fear is death. But one of the issues with drug addiction is we don't think it'll ever happen to us. Even though there are countless statistics out there that talk about how tens of thousands of people each year are dying in the United States alone from opioid addiction, right? That's not even including alcohol, cocaine, meth, all these other drugs, right? We know all these people are dying, but in the mind of an addict, it's not gonna be me. It's not gonna be me. And this is wherever you're at on the financial spectrum, right? So when you combine that with the fact that you're not gonna lose that much when you're financially well off, like it's difficult to stay clean. They have all these things working against them. Like I'll never forget, I remember, like this is even just one story, just one story popped in my head, but I remember a guy who got pulled over for a DUI and he was thinking, thank God. Thank God, now I have to get help, right? Because oftentimes we need some kind of rock bottom, some kind of crazy thing to happen to us to get back on the right track, right? And for a lot of people who have a ton of money, that's not going to happen to them. You know what I mean? So I applaud any celebrity out there or anybody who has a ton of money who's able to get sober. But for all of you out there, because we're, we're the minority, most of us aren't rich. We're not famous, right? And I just want you to kind of look at this alternate perspective because I remember when I first got sober, I saw friends who they got sober. They were sober for like five minutes and their family would rent them an apartment or buy them a car or get them a job or whatever. And I swear to you, 90% of the time, those people relapse because they didn't have to work for anything. You know what I mean? I saw this countless times working at the treatment center because I would call people after they left treatment to see how their recovery was going. And the more stuff they got back right away or that was given to them, the more likely it was that they were going to relapse. Like when I got sober, I had nothing. And the most successful people I've seen to recover from addiction started with nothing in their recovery. So I just want you to think about that for a little bit because all of those difficulties that we go through, they are strengthening us. They are building resilience. They are making us stronger. You know what I mean? Like I am far from rich. I am still living paycheck 
to paycheck. But whenever I start worrying about money or finances or whatever, I remember where I came from, my humble beginnings, all right? So if you're struggling right now, just remember, it might be the best thing to ever happen to you, all right? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Don't forget, it'll be down in the description below. Don't forget, check me out over on Medium. I don't know how frequently I'll be uploading videos, but I am producing a ton of written content over there because I just absolutely love writing. All right, but anyways, thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And I wanna send out a huge, huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel over on Patreon, as well as everybody who supports the channel by buying my mental health books over at therewiredsoul.com or merch like this sweater with the little Rewired Soul logo on there and all that good stuff. All right, but thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon.